Once upon a time, in the heart of the vast African savanna, where the golden grasses waved in the wind like a sea of gold, there was a secret known only to the animals of the land. This secret was not about hidden treasures or magical places, but about a little lion cub named Leo, whose bravery would change the fate of the animal kingdom forever. It was a typical day in the savannah, the sun blazing high in the sky, and the herds of zebras and antelopes grazing peacefully. Suddenly, a mysterious roar echoed across the plains, unlike any the animals had ever heard. It was deep and powerful, sending a ripple of fear through the hearts of even the bravest creatures. A curious and adventurous lion cub was playing with a small watering hole. His golden fur shone in the sunlight, and his bright blue eyes were wide with curiosity. He had always been fascinated by the world around him, always asking questions and seeking out new adventures. But this roar was different. It filled him with both excitement and trepidation. Did you hear that, Leo asked, turning to his mother, Lyra, who was in the shade of a large acacia tree. Lyra, a wise and gentle lioness, nodded slowly. I did, Leo. It's a roar I've never heard before. It seems to be coming from the north, beyond the Great Rock. Leo's mind raced with possibilities. What could have made such a roar? Was it a new animal? Or perhaps a lost lion looking for its pride? He knew he had to find out. Can we go see, Mama? Can we find out what's making that roar? Leo pleaded, his eyes shining with excitement. Lyra smiled gently at her son's eagerness. It's not safe, Leo. We don't know what it is or if it's dangerous. We must stay with the pride where it's safe. But Leo was determined. He knew he had to be brave and discover the source of the mysterious roar. As night fell and the savannah was bathed in the silver light of the moon, Leo made a decision. He would set out at dawn, quietly, without telling anyone, and find out what was causing the roar. Chapter 2. The Journey Begins The first light of dawn was breaking over the horizon when Leo quietly slipped away from his sleeping pride. The savannah was still cool and peaceful, the grasses rustling softly in the morning breeze. Leo's heart pounded with excitement and a touch of fear. He had never ventured this far from home before. As he walked, Leo encountered various animals along the way. He greeted a family of meerkats who were just waking up and poking their heads out of their burrows. They waved their little paws at him and wished him a safe journey. Next, he met Zuri, a wise old elephant who was drinking from a watering hole. Where are you off to so early, little Leo? Zuri asked, her deep voice filled with curiosity. I'm going to find the source of the mysterious roar, Leo replied bravely. Have you heard it, Zuri? Zuri nodded solemnly. Yes, I have. It's unlike any roar I've heard in all my years. Be careful, Leo. The savannah is a vast and unpredictable place. Leo thanked Zuri and continued on his way, feeling a little more confident with each step. He followed the direction of the roar, heading north towards the Great Rock, a massive formation that towered over the savannah like a guardian. Chapter 3 The Great Rock As Leo approached the Great Rock, he noticed how different everything seemed. The grasses were taller, the trees thicker, and the air was filled with unfamiliar scents. He climbed the rocky slope, his small paws slipping occasionally on the loose stones, but he pressed on determinedly. When he reached the top, Leo was greeted by a breathtaking view of the savannah stretching out endlessly below. He took a deep breath, feeling a sense of accomplishment, but his mission was far from over. He still needed to find the source of the roar. Suddenly, there it was again. The mysterious roar, louder and clearer this time. It echoed off the rocks, making Leo's fur stand on end. 
He looked around, his eyes scanning the landscape for any sign of the creature that made the sound. Then he saw it, near the edge of the great rock, a dark cave that seemed to go deep into the earth. The roar was coming from inside. Leo's heart pounded with a mixture of fear and excitement. This was it, the source of the roar. Gathering all his courage, Leo approached the cave. The entrance was wide and dark, and as he stepped inside, the temperature dropped and the air felt damp and cool. He walked slowly, his eyes adjusting to the dim light. The roar echoed again, louder this time, reverberating through the cave walls. Leo crept deeper into the cave, following the sound. As he rounded a corner, he was met with a surprising sight. There, in the middle of the cave, was a young lion, about his age, with a dark mane just beginning to grow. The young lion was practicing his roar, trying to make it as loud and powerful as possible. Hello, Leo called out hesitantly. The young lion turned, startled to see someone else in the cave. Who are you? he asked, his eyes wide with surprise. I'm Leo. I heard your roar and came to see what it was, Leo explained, stepping closer. The young lion's expression softened. I'm Keto. I've been practicing my roar, but it's not very good yet. I'm trying to sound like my father, who was the greatest lion of all. Leo nodded, understanding now why the roar had sounded so different. You're doing great, Keto. It takes time to learn. My mother always says that bravery and strength come from within. Keto smiled, grateful for Leo's words. Thanks, Leo. I was worried no one would ever hear my roar and know I was here. Leo felt a surge of determination. We'll make sure everyone hears your roar, Keto. We'll show them that you have the heart of a lion. Leo and Keto spent the rest of the day exploring the area around the Great Rock. Leo introduced Keto to the different animals they met along the way. They shared stories, laughed, and learned from each other. Leo felt a strong bond forming between them, as if they had known each other forever. As the sun began to set, Leo knew he needed to return to his pride, but he didn't want to leave Keto alone. Why don't you come back with me, Keto? Meet my pride. You can practice your roar with us, and we'll help you get stronger. Keto hesitated, unsure if he would be welcome. Do you think your pride will accept me? Leo nodded confidently. I'm sure they will. My mother always says that family isn't just about who you're born to, but who you choose to stand by. With that reassurance, Keto agreed. The two lion cubs made their way back to Leo's pride, walking side by side, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead together. As Leo and Keto approached the Pride's territory, Leo's heart raced with excitement and a touch of nervousness. He hoped his family would accept Keto and understand the importance of their new friendship. When they reached the edge of the Pride's territory, Leo's mother, Lyra, spotted them and ran to meet them. Leo, where have you been? We've been so worried, Lyra exclaimed, pulling her son into a tight embrace. I'm sorry, Mama. I had to find the source of the roar, Leo explained, stepping back to introduce Keto. This is Keto. He's the one making the roar. He's been practicing, trying to find his place. Lyra looked at Keto with kind eyes, sensing his nervousness. Welcome, Keto. Any friend of Leo's is welcome here. Keto smiled shyly, grateful for Lyra's warm welcome. Thank you, Mom. Lyra led the cubs back to the pride, where they were met with curiosity and interest from the other lions. Leo explained Keto's story, and soon the entire pride gathered to hear Keto practice his roar. Keto took a deep breath and went out to his roar. It wasn't perfect, but it was full of determination and heart. The pride listened intently, and when Keto finished, they cheered and encouraged him. You're doing great, Keto, one of the older lions said. Keep practicing and you'll be as strong as any lion here. Keto beamed with pride, feeling accepted and valued for the first time. Leo stood by his side, knowing that this was just the beginning of their adventures together. 
The days turned into weeks, and Keto became an integral part of the pride. He and Leo trained together, honing their skills and learning from the older lions. Keto's roar grew stronger and more confident with each passing day. One day, a new challenge presented itself. A rival pride of lions had moved into the territory adjacent to Leo's pride, and tensions were high. The rival pride was led by a fierce and powerful lion named Zuberi, who had a reputation for being ruthless and unforgiving. Zuberi's pride began encroaching on the land and resources of Leo's pride, leading to several tense confrontations. The situation reached a boiling point when Zuberi issued a challenge to Leo's pride. Send your strongest lion to face me, and if they win, we will leave your territory. But if they lose, we will take over. Leo's pride was worried. Their strongest lions were older, and not in the prime of their strength. But Leo had an idea. Let Keto and I face Zuberi together. We've been training hard, and together we can be strong enough to win. The Pride Elders were hesitant, but they saw the determination in Leo's and Keto's eyes. They knew that the two young lions had a special bond and a unique strength when they worked together. With the Pride support, Leo and Keto accepted Zuberi's challenge. The day of the challenge arrived, and the savannah was filled with an air of anticipation. Animals from all around gathered to witness the showdown between the two prides. Zuberi stood tall and imposing, his eyes filled with confidence and arrogance. Leo and Keto stepped forward, side by side, their hearts pound, but their resolve unwavering. They knew that this was their moment to prove their bravery and protect their family. The battle began, and Zuberi lunged at the young lions with fierce power. But Leo and Keto moved with agility and precision, using their teamwork to outmaneuver their opponent. They darted and dodged, landing strategic moves and avoiding Zuberi's powerful attacks. Keto the sound echoing across the plains. It was a roar filled with all the strength and determination he had built up as a training. The sound startled Zuberi, giving him the he needed to land a decisive blow. The fight continued, with Leo and Keto working in perfect harmony. Their bond and teamwork proved to be their greatest strength, and slowly but surely, they began to wear Zuberi down. Finally, with one last powerful roar from Keto and a swift strike from Leo, Zuberi was defeated. The rival pride, seeing their leader fall, retreated, leaving the territory for good. Leo and Keto stood victorious, their pride cheering and celebrating their bravery and strength. With the threat of Zuberi's pride gone, peace returned to the savannah. Leo and Keto were hailed as heroes, their bravery and teamwork inspiring all the animals of the land. The bond between the two young lions had not only saved their pride, but had also shown everyone the power of friendship and unity. As the sun set over the savannah, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink, Leo and Keto sat together, watching the horizon. They knew that their adventure was just beginning, and that together, they could face any challenge that came their way. Thank you, Leo, Keto said, his voice filled with gratitude. I never could have done this without you. Leo smiled, placing a paw on Keto's shoulder. We're a team, Keto, and as long as we stick together, there's nothing we can't do. The two young lions watched as the stars began to twinkle in the night sky, feeling a deep sense of contentment and hope for the future. They knew that no matter what lay ahead, their friendship would guide them through, and their bravery would inspire others for generations to come. And so, in the heart of the African savannah, under the vast starry sky, the tale of Leo and Keto, the brave little lions, became a legend, a story of courage, friendship, and the unbreakable bond between two souls who dared to dream and stand together.